This is Fight Night on Talk Sports with myself, Adam Catterall, and Gareth Day Davies. Uh, and I think it's only fair that we start. I think it, we, it's not too early to start the build up, is it, Gareth? No, for, the, no. for, for, the, for the big Wembley fight now in front of 94,000 people, as we had confirmed uh, this week. Undercard confirmed as well. Tyson Fury taking on Dillian White, WBC, Ring Magazine, lineal titles all on the line in the heavyweight division. And it's coming to you live right here on Talk Sport. A little earlier on this week, Gareth caught up with Frank Warren to get us a preview. What of the silence of Dillian White up to this point? Still haven't heard from him. A very well-documented discussion row with yourself and Jeffrey Bentz on, on Talk Sport the other night uh, or the other afternoon. What, 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 what do you make of this whole situation? Have you ever experienced it in your time as a promoter? It's all very sad. You know, we bid a lot of money for this fight, which puts a lot of money in Dillian's pockets. He gets uh, just, just over $7.5 million guaranteed. And he gets a four million upside should he win. He should be delighted. I mean, it's 30, it's 32, 32 times more than the last person he lodged with the WBC. Why? I don't know why we're the enemy with this. And he's got an upside of four should he win. It's all very sad. And as you say, it's the biggest, biggest boxing event to ever take place in this country. The biggest gate ever, 94,000. At Wembley, it's the biggest any event that they've ever put on single day event grossing you know, financially, biggest ever event. This is, mad, this is mega stuff, and I don't know why he's being a pain. Well, as you say, and, and yet there's, it seems like extraordinary sabotage. I mean, I say we heard the, the altercation, if you like, between yourself and Jeffrey Benz. The, the two, we see what attrition there is in the background to this. I mean, have there been attempts to try and bridge over the river since then? Jeffrey Benz is, is, is according to, I don't know what, he's got two positions. He's either the advisor or his lawyer. But as his lawyer, we sent him the contracts and he signed, a con, signed that contract. Everything in that contract we've adhered to, he hasn't. He's asked him things that are not in the contracts, which, and the way he asked for them is quite antagonistic. It's demanding. It's like... Black, it, it, say blackmail, and it is. You know, if you don't do this, we won't show up at the press conference, and etc. It's not acceptable, and I'm not going to tolerate that anyway. I mean, <laughs> he certainly picks on the wrong person there. The bottom line of all of this is that all we want is a successful event. All we want is Dillian White to adhere to his contractual commitments. That's all we want. Nothing more, nothing less. And he hasn't done that as of yet. And and you've you've chosen three overseas judges, a British referee, of course. You're saying because you want no ambiguity and absolute transparency over anything anyone could say if it does go to points on the night. Well, I haven't chosen them. The, the, the officials were chosen by the WBC and the Boxing Board of Control. The contract states quite clearly that we go under WBC's rules and regulations, and it's for them to appoint officials, not for me, Jeffrey Bentz, Dillian White, Tyson Fury, or anybody. It's for them to appoint them. It's their title. Just turning to Saudi Arabia for a moment, there's some um, talk of potentially uh, Alexander Usyk defending against Anthony Joshua, those three world title belts in Saudi Arabia. Given the, the history that's going on with Saudi Arabia at the moment and the Yemen, do you think it sends, if it does happen, do you think it sends a strange message if Alexander Usyk is coming out of war-torn Ukraine, going to a country that's bombing another country next to it at the moment? Or do you think the fight will end up in London? I don't think that. Look, listen, that's for them to decide. What's your view on it, though, about, about Usyk going to Saudi? Does it seem a little odd if they do? I look at that, that at the moment they've had Formula One there, they've had numerous football matches, tennis matches, numerous, numerous acts go there. Boris Johnson was there uh, a couple of weeks ago trying to do a deal for fuel for the UK. That, that's what you want me to say. That's a fact of life. That's, that's where it's at. Usyk's his own man and it's up to him what he wants to do. We in boxing, and we, you know, we're not the moral guardians of what should be happening in the world. When our leaders are out there doing what they do, I have no. Pro if somebody asked me right this moment, would I do a fight in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, I would, because 
Queen Why wouldn't I? Everybody else seems to be doing it. Well, last year Fury and Joshua was going to be in Saudi. Yeah, but respect, but Fury, uh, jo- Joshua has already fought in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And as I say, there's numerous other sports. Formula One, as I mentioned, and various other. I mean, they've had football matches. Everything it is what it is. Fair enough. Um, and finally, um, on, on Daniel Dubois, obviously, one of your old rivals, Don King, won the purse bids for Daniel Dubois, the WBO world title against uh, Trevor Bryan. Um, he named several venues on it, America, London included. Do you think there's any chance of that fight coming to London? I don't give a monkey's where it goes on. Just get it on, Don, in June. Fulfil your... Uh, purse bid obligations and we get on with it I just want Daniel busy he's been very he's had to sit there very frustratingly for a long time now to keep keep his position in the WBA it's not good for him it's not good for us as promoters We all we want to do is see him out there be busy he's a young man and we need to move forward so Don do the, do what you what, do what you said you're going to do you won, the, you won the purse bids put the fight on Frank Warren catching up with Gareth uh, a little earlier on, you might have heard a little bit of uh, clinking of glasses and uh, cutlery in the background. It was at a, a media dinner a little earlier on this week, and I do feel for Frank. I really do. I've heard him a couple of times now on Talk Sport, and obviously we've spoken to him a few times now on, on this particular show. As he rightfully says there, he's putting on one of, well, as he as we found out this week, 94,000 people will be the biggest through gate uh, of any one event at Wembley Stadium. He's putting that on a huge, huge event, uh, and he's just coming up against these roadblocks, these bumps in the road in order to promote it how he wants to promote it because obviously Dillian and his team want to do something very, very different. It's it, I, you, can, you can feel the frustration in his voice just listening to it there, Gareth. Well, I'm glad he verbally battered some sense into you a couple of weeks ago, Adam, that you now agree that it must be very frustrating. Look, I know, I know you made the point that Dillian doesn't have the legal obligations to do much, but I do think they're feeling now that they're getting really close to this fight. It's an enormous fight. As, as Frank Warren outlined there at the, uh, it was it was a lunch that turned into a dinner, by the way, <laughs> um, the, um, on Wednesday in um, in in the West End. Um, you look, it must be very frustrating that you know Bob Arum has created in America as well this huge figure that Tyson Fury's become. He, he's 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 rejuvenated. He, he's born again, Phoenix from the ashes after that first Wilder fight, and you know his, his rise in that twelfth round, and then the growth of his um, kind of just standing, his resonance with the American public, and obviously now with the British public as well. And and you know that there, there, there's, I, I think. I think it's going to be very difficult for Dillian White. If Dillian White wins, then everyone will say he was a genius in what he did and the yeah. team did the right thing. You know, boxing's like that. The narrative changes with with what happens. But, you know, I think if Dillian, if Dillian doesn't do well in the fight and he gets schooled or knocked out by Tyson Fury, I think there'll be little sympathy. And I don't care what people say out there right now that, you know, you know, oh, you're just on the side of Fury. No, we'd like to see Dillian White as a... As a as someone that's covered boxing a very long time, I'm really disappointed not to see Dillian in the, in, in the build-up, not see Dillian until whatever it is going to be, Wednesday of fight week that we're covering on Talk Sport that week, obviously live commentary. But well, we don't even know if we, if we will see him, will we? No, we, we will. We, 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 we will. He'll be, he'll be in town. He's got to come over from Portugal, Addy. There's no way he won't come. He doesn't have come. to speak, though, does he? He doesn't have to No, be. he doesn't. He could, he, could, he could have masking tape all over his face. It, <laughs> it doesn't, you know, again, that, that could happen. But... For Dillian, it must be frustrating as well because, you know, he, he's not someone given to those kind of silences. And, you know, I, I've listened a couple of times to that to that um, on-air um, altercation between Frank Warren and Jeffrey yeah. Benz, White's lawyer, and it, it's just shocking. It, 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 it's shocking when the biggest British, biggest attended, the biggest British fight of all time at Wembley Stadium, 94,000 people, and we've only got one guy in a cardboard cutout of the other one so far in, in genuine media terms, in terms of what's, what's being said by, by the guy challenging for the WBC title. And, you know, Dillian's got his reasons, his team have got their reasons, but it's just very frustrating all round.